Okay. Welcome to the first stream in what will hopefully be a series of streams, um, if I can remember to do it regularly. Um, where I am going to attempt to build a game engine from scratch. Um, scratch in this context includes um, using uh, pre-built libraries for things like interfacing with graphics. Specifically, we're going to be using SDL. Um, is my mic all right? The one viewer I have. It was hopefully not a bot. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, I am recording this for posterity, so I will keep talking to myself. <clears throat> okay, so, um, goal for today is at the bottom of the stream. The goal is to get a window showing up that will display regular polygons. Um, now, I could get that done probably pretty easily in, you know, a few seconds just throwing SDL queries and stuff, um, calling SDL functions. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I want to build this thing at least a little correctly. I've never built one of these before, so there is that. class into a singleton because I only anticipate needing a single window and anytime I need to swap it out I'm just going to I just have it redraw rather than deal with anything like that so uh, let's set up a basic screen shall we um, all right, uh, let's start with private it's also been a while since I've done anything serious in C++, so I'm going to be a little rusty. A screen pointer called instance. That needs to be... It's not program that much on this keyboard. Uh, today's going to be wonderful. <clears throat> Alright, so... Other than that, we are going to need to know its dimension. So if we're going to need dimensions, that means we're going to need a data structure to hold that information. So I will add a new item, go off and do something else, and we'll call it, um, hmm, really just need a height and a width. Well, for now, we're going to make it a 2D point. And I'm not going to actually define the code here. I'm just going to define the outline of a point class. Um, those of you who know a little something about SDL, you may be wondering why I'm going through all this trouble. There's already a point struct. Um, the answer is I want to make everything as much as I can, and I don't know how to do a lot of the low-level stuff, but um, I can at least do some of this data structure work so that they're a little bit nicer for me to work with. Uh, it's 14th. Like this. Detailing 
<sighs> All right, so let's make our class. This one's a little going to be a little bit easier. Shifted. Those into floats. If you need them zents, we'll just cast them later. Alright, well, that's all we really need in terms of private stuff, so. Let's see. Public. We're gonna need our big four, which is our constructor. Faults instructor because I suspect we're going to be doing arrays, so we'll need that. Um, we will need also, I will mention I'm using Visual Studio. That's not because I like Visual Studio, that is in direct contravention of my wishes, but um, it made it easy to install the libraries I needed, so that's why I'm using it. So we don't need a destructor because we're not doing any sort of dynamic allocation because there's no reason to. Uh, we will, however, just for fun flavor, use a copy constructor. And then we will also Make our assignment operator. Okay. So that should be everything that we need there. And then we will need some accessories. So we will need uh, get width. Height. No, that should be get X. I get Y. Think of how I'm going to use it, not how it should be defined. Um, uh, let's. Normally, I would want to make this an immutable class, um, so that when I do all sorts of arithmetic and other things with it, it doesn't screw with it that much, but um, we are going to ignore my normal the normal way I do things, because... Um, we're trying to be a little bit more memory efficient here, and that's going to incur a lot of penalties. Okay, so this is all we need so far, um, definition-wise. And I know I said I wasn't going to, but I am going to go ahead and define it, because I'm here. So, let's grab our header comment, put that in. Include our source, so it can be point two D. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna pop this. Come on. Oh, uh, let me pop it to the side. <sighs> yes, I know. I want you. This is why I hate Visual Studio. Please ignore the fact that I'm. Literally trying to figure this out on the fly. Uh, can I split the darn? <sighs> okay, wow. No, I want to options. Can I? Can I get more than one column, please? Uh, oh. Okay. 
So you just have to be difficult about it. There we go. Okay. This will make it easier. So. No, don't send auto suggestions if you're not going to allow me to select them. Okay, we're going to default to values of zero, so. Also going to need Alright, that's set up. I know this must be absolutely riveting to watch. But it is the beginning of a project. Hopefully we'll have something interesting by the end of it. Alright, so... There's a copy constructor, and then very easily... you're going to let me select that, let me select it. Okay. Alright, there we go. So we know we're going to return this so that we can do a series of assignments if we need to. Uh, and then it's just literally the same exact code that's in here, so let's just copy and paste that in. Alright. Code. Oops. So something worth mentioning, I will try... And unless something is absolutely aggravating the living daylights out of me, I will try and only work on the code during stream. However, I will work on uh, general design work, getting algorithms down, the kind of stuff that would have you just stare at me for a couple of hours on stream. So that that doesn't happen. Um, and hopefully all of that design work will reveal itself as I put this together. And so it's not a m entirely missing component. Okay. There we go. Alright, so now we've got our simple point class. Don't need this anymore. Let's go to our screen. I am going to add in type def here so that a point to D can be read as a uh, dim to D. If I decide to make a dim to D class, I will just <coughs> get rid of that type def, I guess. Um, so. Static variables. Instance variables. So, um, for those of you who don't know, a singleton is an object that can only have one instance at a time. Um, in some languages, that is mainly handled by essentially you just never instituting a second object with like no control. So for example, Python doesn't have data hiding, so that's what you have to do. Um, in C++, however, you can do a lot of explicit things. So I'm going to include a point to D 
but I'm actually going to call it dim 2D. That's why I did the type def. Dim. And I am... I understand that I could put in a whole bunch of extra stuff like vsync and I'll, I'll do settings eventually but I'm just gonna kind of plow through with just a basic screen for now all right uh, the other thing we need is a private um, uh, private constructor Take a dim 2D. Um, call that dim. We'll also take one that'll take an index and an Y, and then we'll just create the dim 2D on the fly. Okay. So, things I need to do. Step one I need to see if. I can grab some stuff. So let's just look at this documentation for a little bit. Um, this is environment variables. Uh, display window management. No. Okay, no, no, no. Uh, get display. Display bounce. There we go. So in order to do this, uh, this is in which.h file. Okay, back, back. Um, steal video. Okay. We need to include. we're in the right place video okay hmm so this is going to use an SDL rectangle which means we get to make another um Yep. Which means we get to make another fun little file. Alright, we're going to make our own rectangle class because um, we're adults, I guess, and we can. So, let's do that. Right um let's call it rect. Finding a rectangle class. And I'm going to get rid of this 
so I'm gonna change this. Yeah, these are all ints, so... Um, this is going to be our wrapper for SDL rec. Okay. And X, Y, width, and height. And then we are going to make our fun constructors and stuff. In fact, let's make these be able to take two 2D points, A and B, and construct um, a rectangle from that. I just realized I should probably... Okay, I'm not going to comment. I'm going to try desperately not to overcome it the hell out of this thing. Um, need a copy constructor. We don't need a copy constructor. Don't at me. Visual Studio keeps correcting my style. I developed this style by not paying attention. Just do what Python and Java does and just allocate everything on the stack. Just to be spiteful. Accessors. X Y W Right. Okay. Alright, our mutatoes. Shall continue. All right, now we need the accompanying CPP file. And we're going to do things well once we change these. Functions. Let's do that. Code, which I forgot to do on this one. Code file. There we go. Cool. 
cool. That has fixed. Um, I need to scope all of these. Which I'm going to do in the easy fashion. Which can sometimes lead to mustiques. Get rid of this. So we our H file. Okay. So by default, we're gonna have X equals Y equals W equals H, which equals zero. Everything gets set to zero. Don't specify it, don't like it, specify it. Okay. Um, no, I, nope, I did not include our point file. Uh, thank you, red marks. All right, so now in this case, hmm. uh, all right, so X. Now we have to check. Uh, C++ has a built-in min function. Don't tell me it's all the way in the... I'm not including a giant algorithm thing for a freaking min function. Uh, so... We are going to hmm. All right, I'm going to go. Just want C math. I apologize for the ads. Okay. Oh, those are floats. I need ints. Yes. Come on. No, because you're gonna do float BS. I just need a frickin' integer, please. All right. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know what? <sighs> yep. I'm going to have to do it. Uh, let's see. Add new filter. All its utilities. Uh, put this. Uh, no, I don't want to put inside data structures. I want to put above data structures. Fine, fine. No, I don't. Yes. Okay. Add a new filter for headers. And add a new filter for source. Sources. Sources. 
align it with the convention I have already established. <sighs> okay, there's the back. All right. So, let's add a new header. I'm going to call it engine math. It is going to do nothing but have functions, math functions that I can't find in C that I can use later. So, like a clamp function, if you're familiar with what a clamp function is. Um, library modules P file, call it cpp. And we will copy in and define IMAX. I am also going to namespace this just to make sure I'm not going to run into any um, naming issues. This will mark the probably first and last time I ever use namespace. I'm probably going to end up eating those words by the end of this, but you know what? Okay, this begs the question. Uh, function in a namespace. Yep. That's what I thought. So, this will be emath. So, uh, I'm sure there's probably a more efficient way to do it, but I'm just going to do the if statement version. Um, oh, I see I now have three viewers. How wonderful. Welcome to the absolutely probably most boring stream on Twitch. Alright, so max function b return a otherwise return b hooray so I'm going to need that here so engine math I'm also going to need to include c math because I need its absolute value function and now we can get back to what we started doing I'm going to move this over to our CPP site. And x is going to be a dot get x. a dot get x. It's going to be the minimum of those two. Well, it's going to be the e math. Oh, I have i max, but not i min. Oh, yeah. So I'll need that as well. Hi, Crane. 
How's it going? Uh, in, until now, I haven't had an active chat member, so how's my uh, mic and other apparatus? Cool. Eh, don't worry about it. Um, you you missed a riveting amount of uh, copy and pasting and doing very boring data structures work. Not that we're out of those woods yet. Um, I suspect, hopefully, if we reach the goal today, we will be somewhat out of those woods. Um, we'll at least have something visual for the visual people. Uh, right now, we are uh, building a rectangle class that will be the basis of how we define our um, uh, yeah um, okay uh, the white noise might also be the backing music that I've got going so that it's not completely silent while I type um, but we'll, we'll I can figure that out later it's no big deal um, so, all right, the absolute value of get x minus b dot get x. Why we're doing height. Okay. So that works. Now we need to ooh. I need to be able to do this for an SDL rectangle. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. Uh so Back to the API reference. Which H file is that in? It's in SDL rec. That H. Because I hate structures. We will be able to take in an SDL rec and convert it to our own. Capital, capital R. Man, I hate the snake casing DS. And let's take a reference. If you have any computer science, burning computer science questions, please feel free to ask them because otherwise it's going to be a lot of me vamping. All right, so we're just copying values over now. So computer science officially started years and years and years ago um, as uh, 1936, Alan Turing wrote his seminal paper, uh, well, published a seminal paper, I should say, uh, which was uh, on the Entscheidungsproblem and computable numbers or something to that effect. Uh, which Crane, as someone who knows uh, German, will know that, um, and I'm probably mispronouncing mispronouncing in Scheitergungs, um, but it's literally the decision problem, which is the basis of all computer science, is um, whether or not something is decidable. So, given a computation 
that has a essentially yes or no answer. Can I compute it? Um, the answer is surprisingly there are things in this universe that cannot be um, uh, computed. Uh, hey, Jax. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome to class. Um, I, I expect you uh, pulled a mason and we're running down the sidewalk, bagel in mouth, um, in a very anime kind of way. Um, all you have missed is uh, data structures work. So we're 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 having fun doing that. Um, anyway, so 1936, Turing publishes this paper. Um, describing what is computable and what isn't computable and makes this thing called a Turing machine. And um, it was 1936, and then some stuff happened um, in uh, uh, 1936 through 1945 in England. Um, that got in the way. Uh, luckily, our hero in this story, um, Alan Turing, Managed to single-handedly defeat the Nazis. Um, and uh, finally got back to work. Uh, was then persecuted by his government for indecent acts. Um, because he was homosexual. And uh, they drove him to the brink of insanity. And he ended up committing suicide with a poisoned apple. Although, if you ask his mother, she would deny that, but most, uh, I think, parents would deny that their uh, child was that, uh, well, essentially, depressed. Hit is not a thing. Height is a thing. Uh, Crane, I mean the missing era of Volkswagen cars. You know, the last time we had to deal with fascists in an organized fashion. Yeah, hit, it's, it's the new hip measurement that all the kids are talking about. Ask uh, literally any of my students and they'll tell you I cannot. I cannot, like, spell to save my life. Or type, apparently. That is ambiguous. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I get there eventually. But I do tend to stumble along the way. I'm surprised I'm as successful at programming as I as I am. So, that should be everything I need for a rectangle for now. Which means we can go back to the screen class. And actually have a chance of... Um, all so that we could have a constructor that doesn't take input. And let's change these. Right. screen. should be on the HPP side. Jack's deciding to communicate in almost exclusively uh, emojis. Uh, so back to the screen. Um, we are going to need some static methods. 
because that's the only way you will be able to interact with this. So we'll return a screen pointer. Hit instance. Ah, so therefore you have access to all the the uh, emojis you want. Um, now I am probably going to put these on my to-do list. These two get instances because they are going to involve. Um, resizing the screen if I need to uh, rather than just creating a completely new instance um. <laughs> yeah I, I am I am actually legit excited for Jax's uh, eventual um, emote slots uh, that's a that's gonna be fun um, And if for whatever reason this attracts an audience, it's not just y'all who know me. Um, an actual like instance methods. Um, I will probably um, <laughs> uh, steal, uh, not steal. I'll probably steal some money to pay Jax, but uh, get get Jax to actually make emotes if I ever need that service. Um, paid, obviously. Hashtag always pay your artists. Now, I will I will say uh, back when I first tried to start streaming. <laughs> Uh, which like was like two streams. Um, I I I came very close to. Uh, uh, I mean, I was gonna do it. Um, I uh, was gonna uh, contract Jax, but uh, Jax was was busy at the time, um, uh, not not doing any commissions or anything. Um, uh, so that and my streaming career fell by the wayside. So that went away, but. There was a point in time when Jax was going to do all of my graphics and stuff, and I was going to have a little PNG model that didn't move or anything, but as you can see, I have opted for the face cam. Anyway, back to a screen, because that's the first part of our goal, is getting a friggin' window up, and it's almost been an hour, and we haven't yet. Okay. Uh, instance methods. Instance methods. Uh... What do we need to do with this screen? Well, I'm gonna need. Uh, you know what? No methods for now. Uh, we need a uh, void destroy method, uh, and then we're gonna need a destructor for our screen. Okay. Only if you make me a, a, a what is it, a, a ferret for the joke? We'll talk. Actually, um, Jax, I have an idea of something um, that I want to hang on my uh, office door, in fact, um, that I need to, to hit you up about. Um, that I think you'll like the concept of. Um, no guarantees, of course, but... Uh, I will probably forget to hit you up because it's been rattling around my head in a, for a little while. <sighs> I knew that was coming. I knew you were going to say that. 
You know, I was really thinking today in class I should invite some of my upper level students to this stream. Like, invite them as in tell them about it. Um, but I wanted to actually have something that somewhat worked before um, I show students. You know, have a little office hours and they can see that I don't instantly know everything and uh, write perfect code all the time. Because I think they get the impression that I do. Because I am often able to spot errors in their code and tell them how they should have been designing it all along. See, it's alright if you act up in front of my kids, Crane. Um, because you're not me. And as long as there's no, like, pay-to-play interface or anything like that, it's not going to be, like, a big to-do about ethics and other BS. Alright, uh, I need to get this darn screen up and running. Yeah, one of the key things is I forgot I have trouble talking about other stuff and coding at the same time. Maybe not optimal here. If you're going to curse, curse properly, so go ram it or frack um, to be on, uh, on proper sci-fi terms. <sighs> Do I need the static declare or not? We're going to find out. Uh... Wait, no. Or is it just screen instance? Watch as and marvel as I learn how to do this all over again. Uh, all right, so screen. Mm. I'm just gonna shake my head. All right, so by default we're gonna make a couple. API calls. <laughs> so I will need an SDL rect though, so. Race. Dim. Because I will need to pass that as a reference. SDL video. Uh, get display bounds. Okay, uh, we're going to ignore uh, any sort of error protocols for now. Um, and uh, break stuff and hope it doesn't break too bad. Um, so yeah, we're going to... Oh, this is really unsafe. SDL, get display, bounce. Display zero and give it our dimensions. Okay. Uh, I'm still going to save that into a variable for later use potentially. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have a rectangle with our dimensions, which means we can do. Ooh, no. Um, temp dim so that we can then say that our dim is a rectangle based on temp dim and we have successfully saved it away from temp dim and hopefully oh that's another thing we'll need I will deal with that in a moment okay oh hey Mason how's it going Sorry, I'm trying to look back and forth, but I'm knee-deep in SDL documentation. Because uh, I need to create a window. Okay, so. Uh, 
Oh my god. It's a good thing I know C. <coughs> ah, yep. Really goat seeing that, uh. <clears throat> oh. <coughs> uh, uh, documentation there. So we need an SDL window pointer. And we need an SDL renderer. Is it a, called a renderer? Yeah, no, it's renderer. Renderer. Come on, autocomplete. Tell me I'm doing my job right. Okay. Ah. Category render. Render.h. Okay, so that's another thing I need to include. Steel. Render. Alright. Photo complete could just pick off pick up where I left off. Hey, there we go. Pointer. Renderer. Yes. Right off the red nose renderer. Um, actually, fun fact, the uh, red nose uh, is not the original color. It's actually due to a shader error. Uh, you would think it would be a renderer error, but um, renderers just take shader information, so it's actually a shader error. Um, Anyway, I've been distracted. Okay, so. I love how this already has multiple points of failure. Oops. <clears throat> Boxy, don't die. Crane. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to ignore, we're going to make an integer variable called flags, and right now it's going to be zero. SDL create window. Oh my god. Don't make me type the entire thing in. Oh, I said this at the beginning when no one was here. Um, I know I'm using Visual Studio, but I hate Visual Studio. everything by reference which is I mean it's a smart way of doing things it's just absolutely more annoying we will assume that the window got created so now we have a window of a particular size the entire screen in fact um, let's look at window flags see if we want any flags um, Okay, let's just use the, the default one for now. Uh, Mason, um, as for the status of things, uh, we haven't actually finished um, 
building the screen object yet. So we can't even get a screen up so far. We do, however, have rectangles, two-dimensional points. Uh, I realized there are some math functions I wanted, so I made my own little math library where I can shove all that stuff if I need to. Um, so up to this point, we <clears throat> have been mainly doing infrastructure. Um, so hopefully after this, I can go into um, my main function and actually get a window popped up. It'll probably fail on me a couple times before we get there. Um, also, since you're working, uh, not to not to to dox um, Mason, but can you get your company to fix this frickin' ID? I hate that I have to use it, but I have to use it. Because it turns out the other one that allows you to, like, plug stuff in easily is called Code Blocks. Except Code Blocks has trouble compiling stuff into 32-bit executables. Now, there are, sorry, 64-bit executables. No, it's 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 Visual Studio. I mean, it's it's not VS Code. VS Code is just an editor. This is Visual Studio. Now it's the Community Edition, but uh, it's the editor experience I freaking hate. Um, anyway, this will allow you to compile a uh, three-dimensional, not three-dimensional. God, brain freaking. <clears throat> This will allow you to compile into 64-bit um, because my machine has decided, probably due to running Windows 10, that it just won't, it won't run 32-bit anything. Just won't. Even in compatibility mode, which is dumb. So, Visual Studio. I mean, I looked into using just like make files, but I'm on a Windows machine, so like, I don't want to bash my head against a wall for six months just figuring that one thing out. Don't tell me about CMake, because it's just going to piss me off. Why are you yelling at me? Yeah, there should be a... Oh. Of course I forgot to implement it. That's why... I... <coughs> Ugh. Oh, hey, I'll implement the fancy one that requires me to do a little bit of mathematics, but I won't implement the easy one. of you uh, who uh, are CS people in the crowd, um, my uh, student's current assignment is to build a linked list in C, uh, so they have to deal with pointers. Um, they're having a lot of fun. Okay, don't even get me started about them, and I'll be honest, if I felt like I don't want to dual boot, I don't want to do blah, 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 but I mean, yes, would I like to be on a Linux environment using Atom as my editor and then using make files and all that? Yeah, love that. Um, but I'm on my home PC, so. Uh, literally the exact same function after this. So, just copy and paste back. Okay. Window renderer. 
<clears throat> All right, and then let's make the destructor. should be easy. Yeah, it's a nasty old. Excuse me. zeros. All right. Why are you yelling? The function definition is literally right here. Oh, no. It's defined. It's defined. Have I mentioned how much I hate this damn thing? All right. Uh, no, it just needs to be three. Oh, look. Testing purposes, we are going to have it just get a window that is say 100 pixels by 100 pixels. You know what? I'm going to make it 500 by 500 so it actually shows up. Um, that we don't have another instance so that we're always getting the same one return instance okay and let's go ahead and do the destroy all right something delete it call okay so uh, let me see if there's a sleep function I can use from here So we'll delay it for what, 10 seconds? Uh, yeah, 10 seconds. Steel. Just a steel delay. Yeah, okay. And let's do this like we're actual programmer, shall we? Okay. Include this 
screen. So what we should be able to do is screen pointer goes get instance. Oh wait no. Screen get instance. Okay, why are you yelling at me? No, it is a static instance. Start. All right. Well, I've forgotten too much about C plus plus. Give me a sec. We'll start it. Oh, it. That's because I didn't declare it as static. <sighs> Somebody bash me over the head until I remember all of my. C++ lessons. Get the Python out of my brain. I mean, yeah, I am recording VODs right now, so. Um, because I have a computer that can do that. Like, I'm broadcast. I mean, A, I'm not, like, broadcasting a video game, so it's not, like, super intense. Um, so before I press this button, I will finish answering this. Um, but I'm only using, like, Point seven percent of my CPU. I love this new computer. Hey! It works! Cool. Now it's gonna wait ten seconds. Alright. Half. Half of the goal is is there. Now we've got to do polygons, and uh, specifically regular polygons. Excuse the uh, can opening sound, I need more caffeine. My eyes haven't started bugging out yet, so I'm not uh, hyped up on enough caffeine. Um, no, I'm, I am not, A, this is a two-dimensional game. Um, B, I have to deal with the people in this chat. Um, don't change jacks, I love you. But I believe if I said that in your chat, you would threaten to ban me. Just saying, not judging. Um, anyway, we need polygons now. This is actually like fun. Uh, well, fun-ish for me now. Um, so we're gonna put a new filter. We'll call this our, our graphics section. Um, but Jax, if I ban you, I'll have six viewers. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so let's do headers and This is the other reason why I wanted to use an IDE rather than just a text editor is because I then don't have to do the whole, like, if you're doing stuff in C++, it all kind of has to be in the same directory when you're compiling it. Um, and I can actually, like, organize stuff in folders without having to um, have there be actual folders to screw up the compilation process. Um, Let's call it Polygon. Add new item. All right. Polygon.cpp goes on the CPP side. File goes first. Uh. Okay, not enough caffeine. I'm failing to spell my own name correctly. It is 
still the 14th of September, 2022. Uh, header file for a general regular polygon class. For use with, um, SDL, if I remember correctly, actually has its own polygon class, which we will want to interface with. Um, so let's go look at that. I don't need all of these windows open. All right. Uh, let's go back. Okay. Drawing uh, surface rectangle. Um, hmm. can turn it up if you want. Um, it's, uh, oh god, I forget the name. Um, it's like 20 minute meditation. It's a Creative Commons, um, like, open uh, public domain song. Because um, I wanted some background music, but I didn't want to have to pay for it. And I'm also not listening to that music right now. I'm listening to a Spotify playlist. But I figured I didn't want everything to be completely dead air when I'm not talking. Well. Looks like I'm going to... to draw these is huh well, okay well that answers that question for me uh, so let's go to our, our renderer our friendly neighborhood renderer and figure out how to do this oh, excuse me hmm. no not surface go to renderer Okay. Given a renderer, I need to draw a series of lines. Okay, that means I'm going to need SDL points, which means I'm going to take my own points and convert them into SDL points. Alright, I'm going to change these to ends because that is currently what is useful. And if I want a float point, I'll do it later. That much probably wailing and gnashing of teeth and getting unreasonably angry at something I chose to do. Uh, oh well. Oh, no, it's under renderer, isn't it? 
Isn't it great when you haven't done uh, any work in, like any work on the thing you just started in 20 minutes after you built it? Uh, Mason, that would that would require a whole bunch of pipes on the screen. Sign decisions on the fly, shall we? You know what? I'm going to minimize memory, so I'm not going to use a vector here. You know, I probably should. Nope, nope, nope. We're not making. Not making a vector. Um. All right. So we will need a whole bunch of 2D points. I'm gonna call them points, not vertices, because I will misspell that. Um, eight sides. Fault for the software and game development thing. <sighs> anyway, back to misspelling the word polygon uh, a bunch of times. Center. Copy 
constructor. to have. But we're going to do it anyway. Um, well, we're not going to deal with mutating it now. Because um, I just kind of want to get it displayed. So I draw to the renderer and then the window just kind of sits there. Hmm. Okay, well, that's fine. Just in case things change. <sighs> All right, let's see if I can. Polygon in somewhat of a working state before 9. Okay, so I'm going to just end the stream at 9. So we might miss out on the goal, but we will have a good foundation for next time.
basically the file you're trying to define. Um, this is going to be zero, sides. Uh, I can pull it down. Just quarter out of my way. So. Alright. So. This function. I'm going to put on my to do list. So it requires that I have a little bit of extra data that I don't currently have. Well, a data structure that I don't currently have. That would be nice. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, let's see. doing this so that when we pass a polygon in not by reference to a function, just for those who might be interested, um, we uh, copy it without potentially um, accidentally releasing the memory that we're using. Um, so that's why we have a copy constructor. This is the first time we've actually like needed it in a data structure, um, but it will come up from time to time. Um, usually whenever we've dynamically allocated something as part of the class. Um, which is what we're doing with the points here. So, we need to copy each of the points over individually. Points, I, well, no, no. Our points equal the other points. This is so nice because we're in C++ where you can overload operators. And then, very similar for our assignment operator, except we might already have something in our object. So we need to go through the destructor first. If points zero. Delete points. Actually work now, and then we return our object so we can chain these together. And then let's work on our destructor. I like to zero everything out, even though I don't need to, because I'm paranoid like that. Yes, Crane, we have a screen. In fact, uh, if it would compile at this point, I would actually run it. But let me finish up defining these functions and then we can show you the blank screen that we have. And hopefully we'll get polygons in the next 20 minutes, but I, I will make no promises. Because um, I have to get my rotational geometry down. Fun. Um, center. Yeah. So center. So turn center. Also, this is not going to be a fully functioning uh, polygon class. It is going to be a. Uh, <laughs> well, it's going to be something. Um, Alright, so. says I know it's it's a lot of memory overhead but the other part of me says that if I do the conversion when I actually make the darn polygon yeah we're gonna do that 
Okay, so uh, I was going to have it every time we ask it to render, go ahead and copy our points over into um, SDL points. Um, but then I realized that once we make a polygon, we're not going to change the number of points, we'll just change the point locations. So then internally we'll use the SDL, uh, our own points for doing all the sorts of calculations and then update the SDL points to match. If that makes sense. You know what, no, we're just gonna do it uh, dynamically for now and if it bites us in the ass later, we'll, we'll come back and fix it. Um, that's a great philosophy to have, but. Maybe we'll do some memoization in the future. Um, waste memory at the benefit of um, speed. Steel points. Yeah, that's for future me to worry about. Oh, I will also say, uh, Crane and anybody else in chat, um, my name is plastered on these files, so don't worry about using my real name, if you know it, which everybody does. Um, I, I am throughout the internet on almost every site with a few exceptions because different requirements or maybe somebody beat me to the punch. Um, I list both my name and this pseudonym, so. Uh, I'm also very boring on social media. Um, I don't get in fights. Or I try not to. Brain, brain, we're copying things over. Yes. So, points. I equals points. I dot. Get it as an steel point. Okay, so now we've got our points. comes up. Disconnect the end. Well, we'll figure it out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, that needs a type. So let's, okay. I uh, probably also have to set a color. That render draw color. There we go. Okay. Just 
just solid black, so that's going to be zero, zero, zero. Um, opaque is 255, so 255. Boom. And then if other results does not equal zero, which means there's an error, we'll return the color result. We already had one error. We don't need two. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, Crane, um, I know I promised this. Um, so when I run it, I get a screen. Yay. Mason, I have slowed the heck down on posting photos, but I should probably post that batch I posted in, in, the, in the Discord um, eventually when I get around to it. Okay. Now, fun part about regular polygons. Uh, is they require rotation. So, I'm going to put this under... Hmm. Now I'm wondering where I should put it. Yep, yeah, I'm going to put it under utilities. Uh, it's not real... I mean, it's a data structure, but it's not... Data structure in the form of sensor. Anyway, um, new item. You know what? Actually, I am going to put it under data structures because I've got points under there and it's mainly going to be used with points. So, we are going to get into some nerdy as hell mathematics. And something really cool that I literally learned from a YouTube video while getting my PhD that I did not know before I was getting my PhD. And this was like four years into my PhD too. Um, I feel lied to. I feel like I would have paid a lot more attention in certain math classes if they had told me that this was a feature of how you rotate points in a two-dimensional space. Um, but we're gonna deal with some complex numbers. Change the name of this to Rotation 2D because we're in 2D. Not that we'll ever have a 3D layer to this, but it's good to label things. Um, so the 14th. will be inaccuracies uh, incurred at some point. Um, I'm not going to care too much about that. That's a programmer's problem. Um, oh wait, no, I'm a programmer. Oh well, it's my problem later. Uh, it's an X and Y component, but it's really R and I, real and imaginary. Okay. Now, to assure you that while this looks like a point, it is not actually a point. Um, therefore, so we'll be able to take both radians and degrees. But if you want to float amount of degrees, you have to go to radians. <sighs> More caffeine. 
Alright. Uh, we don't need the destructor, but... And I know I can just use the default one, but I always am paranoid, so I'm going to make my own uh, copy destructor. And you always need... going to make it to polygons probably. On, polygons on screen. We might finish the polygon class today. Yeah, so actually, another okay, another cool math fact that they don't tell you in mathematics. They tell you radians. They express degrees, right? Um, so why would you need radians versus degrees? Oh, this is not going to have like two parts. It's going to have like 60 parts by the time it does anything absolutely useful. Um, anyway, back to radians. So, uh, obviously, uh, radians are cool, but um, degrees are cool. You can measure how your angle, right? Radians also measure angle, but the way that radians measure angle is actually the distance on a unit circle of an arc. So if you have the amount of radians that are equivalent to a 60 degree arc, that means on a unit circle, the amount, the, the distance of the arc that is created is, uh, what, pi over 60 degrees, uh, 2 pi divided by 6, so pi over 3 radians, that's the distance of a, of a 60 degree arc. Um, so what I'm doing right now, and the reason why uh, the rotation is called real and imaginary, is that complex numbers, numbers that consist of a real number plus uh, another number multiplied by i um, are how you, uh, if you multiply two complex numbers together and you pretend that uh, the real portion, which is the one without i, is the x coordinate and the one with i is the y coordinate, if you multiply those together, it rotates the first point by, an, by the second point, essentially. Um, which I think is sweet, so, um, that's what we're doing here. Um, and then our mutators are going to be, <sighs> yeah, we're just going to have it set an angle, um. Change the degree of the rotation, which means you need a function that will do that for me. So void set rotation.
I mean, Jax, I know I can do it. It's just, uh, my, um, brain is deciding it wants to shut down. Um, but we're only nine minutes out, so I'll wait until nine to let it shut down. I'll be fine. Also, can you tell most of my coding is done in 30 minute increments? I even have a nice uh, BRB screen that I'm not going to use today. Everybody loves a little trick in the morning. Um, there's a radiance conversion here, right? Don't make me do it. Is there a rad function? Of course there isn't. To emf. Somebody has inscription emotes? <sighs> that emote's a spoiler, by the way, for inscription. I mean, like, really small, and you have to know the spoiler to be spoiled on it, but still. <clears throat> Like I said, you'd, you'd, you'd have to know the game in order for it to be a spoiler, so it's really not a spoiler. Anyway, so this is going to be 2 pi. Okay, so 2 pi equals 360. Which means you divide by 2 pi if you wanted to convert, so it's radians degrees. Convert degrees, so I flip that. So it's 360 divided by 2 pi, which is indeed 180 divided by pi. And
Wait, wait, when did I go to my mind palace? Um, I assume that's when I was talking gibberish so that I could do this dumb conversion. Um, yeah, so... No, I want to do the inverse of that. that of course, it's... That's the degree conversion. Also do a degree conversion. <sighs> My mind palace is very dusty. I have to clean the cobwebs out. Keep refusing to do so, though. Multiplied by our degree conversion. No, our rad conversion. Boom. Alright. Yeah, we are not going to get these rendering anytime soon. Um, oh well, something for next time. I have a goal to look forward to. Goals are aspirational, not always going to get there. can get done with part of rotation before now. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, whoa. No, no. I don't want you to build. Yeah. No, duh. You're yelling at me. I know this. Um, okay. So. Ooh. fact everybody uh, if you're struggling to remember which is the x coordinate which is the y coordinate between sine and cosine uh, they're in alphabetical order so x comes before y so cosine because c comes before s cosine is your x coordinate and uh, sine is your y coordinate please subscribe for more math facts So, we will cast them. And they casted them to ints, for they knew not what they wrought. And we are going to lose swaths of accuracy, I'm sure. Uh, Alright, I'm going to finish up the copy constructor. Um... And uh, uh, Simon Operator, and then I think I'm done for today. I thank you for joining me. I will attempt to do this weekly. Um, which, uh, my Thursdays are my somewhat easier days because I just have labs on Thursdays. Um, so this will probably be doable throughout the semester. Um, and hopefully uh, this will actually keep me on this project because I've tried to do this kind of stuff before, but I've never gotten all the way to finished product. And if I have a deadline, i.e. 
if you are going to work on this at this point in time, I will actually work on it rather than put it off or throw it away. You know what? I'm just going to finish up the rest of this class. Tan 2. Turn 8. Tan 2. Uh, make sure that we get the float version. is going to look a heck of a lot like our constructors. So, just copy and paste that. Copy and paste that. Yes. Okay. Oh, hi that's Pickles. You have unfortunately joined right at the end of the stream. Uh, I thank you for showing up, though. Um, so, as I was saying, this is going to be a weekly stream. Um, where I build this game engine from scratch because I'm not a smart person. Um, today we did not get to our final goal of having polygons in a window. We do have a window and we are working on getting polygons up and running. Uh, so... Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll see how far we get next time. Um, I'll probably try and make a better goal than just polygons in a window. But Man, I forgot how much just extra BS architecture there is around something as simple as putting a window up. Um... Yeah, so now we've got like 12 files. One, two, three, four, five. We have 13 files officially, so uh, this will get more interesting as we go along. Um, uh, eventually, we'll get to the fun parts like uh, building KD trees for, for collision detection. Because um, I have a pretty good uh, idea on uh, what I want to so, um, but that being said, it is after nine o'clock and my brain is starting to shut down. So I'm going to go ahead and end stream there. Uh, I hope to see you all next week. Um, the stream should start around 6.30 and end either at 8.30 or 9, depending on how I feel. If I'm completely drained by 8.30, I'll end at 8.30, but I might keep it going for an extra 30 minutes if I can, if I'm not, like, completely brain dead. Um, so yeah, uh, once a week I'll be here doing this for at least two hours, so I hope to see you then. Um, and hopefully we can get that polygons in a window next week, and uh, I'll have to figure out what my goal is after that. Alright, uh, have a good week, I will see you next week.